So the Son of Man, I think most people are at least vaguely familiar with this painting, um, probably because sometimes you'll see it on the back of, people will put stickers on the back of their Macs, so that the, the little Apple icon covers up the person's face, and of course that is referring to or alluding to this painting. It's an oil on canvas painting, it was painted in 1964, as I said, by the Belgian surrealist René Magritte. One interesting thing is that the figure depicted here, the man, it was actually intended as a self-portrait of Magritte. And this person is dressed um, in sort of the characteristic garb of Magritte as well. He would always wear this dark gray overcoat and a bowler hat. And this man stands in front, as you can see, of a, a stone wall that's overlooking the sea. There's a cloudy sky above him. And his face is covered by this hovering or this floating green apple. And we can just barely see his eyes peeking out from the outer fringes of this piece of fruit. And this is probably one of my, uh, actually my favorite as well as, like I said, my dad's favorite surrealist paintings, and it really captures what surrealism means. This painting is all about a desire to see the hidden, right? Especially when it's so close to being revealed to us. Um, I was reading a commentary that Magritte himself actually wrote about this painting. And in this commentary, he discusses, first of all, the main aspect here, the surrealist aspect of this painting, is that the apple, it hides the face, at least partially. We have the apparent face of this individual. We have the apple. The face is somewhat visible. So we have the apple hiding the visible, yet at the same time, it is also hidden. It's the face of the person, both visible and hidden at the same time. It's something that happens constantly, Magritte believed, where everything we see hides another thing, something else, and we always want to see what's hidden by what we see. And Magritte truly believed, as did many of the Surrealists, that this fundamental principle um, of human nature was going to be, or needed to be, one of the driving forces in art. The interest in seeing what is hidden or what is blocked by the visible is a very intense feeling. It's a sort of human conflict, Magritte believed, that one might say between the visible that is hidden and the visible that is present. And I think in many ways our minds have to decide what this person's face looks like out of necessity. We can't accept the reality of the unknown, especially in such tantalizing circumstances where we can almost see the face, but this apple is just so inconveniently placed right where we want to see. And of course, our mind has to fill in that background for us. And this, as I said, is an excellent example of the surrealist mindset. Surrealism, in that realm, the unconscious and the subconscious, they become the true reality. Our human experience, our human existence, the surrealists believed, extended far below and far beyond the level of our ordinary day-to-day -day experiences and our, our visual field of perception. And that the true essence of humanity lay in our ability to think and to function and to feel. And the surrealism attempts to bring this purest level of the human condition to the forefront, our true nature, though it's hidden in everyday reality, hidden within the subconscious, the surrealists believed that this was the true and superior experience of our very existence as human beings. And in many ways, that evokes the central theme of this painting, that the true reality is hidden, in this case by an apple, just like the true reality of our human experience is hidden by the subconscious. But just as to truly appreciate life and understand life, we have to bring the hidden reality of the subconscious to the conscious, to our reality. So we have to fill in this person's face. We have to bring the hidden into the visible by removing this apple within our mind and imagining what this person's face must look like.